Hey everybody, David Chang here with The Art of Thinking Smart, where we're learning to live, think smarter so we can continue to uh, look towards the future and, and live a prosperous life. And today, uh, my guest is John Contini. I'm very excited to have him. Not only is he a financial advisor with Merrill Lynch, he also has his JD, he's an educator, and I just found out before the show that he's also a stand-up comedian. So who knows, maybe we'll get some laughter out of this show uh, uh, from opposed to the other ones that I've had. But John, thank you so much for coming, really it's, appreciate it. It's my pleasure yeah, for being here. So yeah, such a broad uh, you know, array of things that you do. Can you t talk a little bit about it, a little background? Um, Sure, but before, I mean, you mentioned some of the different things I do. There's a, there's a commonality with all mm. those things, um, and that is to, to share my wisdom and spread kind of love and joy through whatever it is that I do. So okay. whether I'm a financial advisor or um, an educator or even doing comedy, right. the, the idea is to share that joy okay got others. it it's like delivering happiness that type of thing where you want to spread that that joy to others exactly um people say well there there are such different things and 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 the reality is they're not okay the reality is it's there is that commonality got it. And, and you've been in new york la now in hawaii so also Correct. live all across the country too right uh, what i like to say the three main spots in the country but it, it, it is it is because because i love those three places and i go to la all the time as people well. in san francisco <laughs> and portland oh, yeah. might argue okay, with me got but, it, you know, I see. <laughs> i'm up for the argument uh, got it got it so today we, we're going to talk about four steps to living a more fulfilled life and uh, uh, and and ha we, when we were talking about how it's not just about money or just about certain aspects of your life, it, it really is a, a conglomeration of it. Um, and, and so I wanted to at least maybe t touch upon um, uh, the first step of what you think of the, it is important as the future, things are going faster in today's economy with social media, the stock market goes up and down. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit. What, what would you say, what is the first step that, that you believe is important to a fulfilled life? Um, it's, it's pretty simple, David. All right. And that is to um, be love okay. and share that love with all always okay regardless what you're doing right so um it, it's with all beings um and that's not just human beings right sure. with all beings all living beings um to be loved with them to be kind to be compassionate mm. um whether it's with you, I love you, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. And, or my children, or, uh, or the stranger on the street, or a client. Um, if you're conveying that love, mm. um, then you're elevating all. Got it. And, and so on top of that, I always ask my guests this. What is the definition of success to you? And what is your definition of being smart? Those two things. So what are your definitions? Okay, so I would define success as being successfully able to do the four things that, that we're going to talk that about. We're, that we're okay, going to talk about. Great. So if you want me to speak about all four, I can. But as long as I'm doing that, right. I'm now successful. Got it. Okay. So we're, we're excited about this show is going to be those four things. And the first one you said is love. Correct. Is about loving yourself, loving others, and... and loving and all, always. Loving all, always. Got it. And, and being smart. And the reason um, our show, Art of Thinking Smart, is, you know, what I, what I see in my background, making smart decisions is very, very important. Uh, and, and every time uh, you can't just say, oh, well, I've seen this problem in the past, so I'm just going to approach it the same way. Uh, with today's world, things change so quickly. What is your definition of it means to be smart? Well, y you say making a smart decision. So what, make, what would make anything a smart decision, mm -hmm. right? And that's if you're making that decision 
going back to that first pillar, based on love, okay. not based on fear, okay. right? Okay. A, 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 as often people uh, do. The opposite of love is in hate, it's fear. Okay, oh, interesting. So opposite of love to you is, is fear and doing things out of fear versus doing things out of love. Uh, and that's where you, uh, like Machiavelli, right? Would you rather be loved or feared, right? I guess so you're saying, hey, it's important to, be, to, to show that love. Okay, I like that. So then now what's the second step? towards living that fulfilling life well you just said it okay the second step is is living okay L living to your fullest right? right so um doing all the things that brings you and others joy okay whatever that may be because it's different for for all people sure. for, for for some people here in hawaii maybe surfing right i see okay um for 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 some people in in new york city and it, it may be um dancing in a nightclub let, all right all right you, you know, wee hours say, in the morning. or, or, or <laughs> um to others it's laughing in a comedy club or taking a hike or in nature just um or spending that um meaningful moment with your child okay. or um whatever it is that you love to do right and, and, right? How, and how do you finding people, that balance right? how do people find that well and if, so example you, you have your jd i mean you could be an attorney if you wanted to you're in finance comedy club you're an educator and you mentioned that when you lived in new york your day job was teaching educating and then 3 4 p.m you would head on the subway to your finance job on wall street uh, if, if somebody's saying well i don't know what i want to do or i don't know how to live how, well, how would you tell them what was the advice you would give? So as an educator, I, I had that conversation with my students many times, mm. right? I also had that, have that conversation with my friends. And, and, and the first question I always ask is, so when are you most happy? Mm. And, um, and I, I dig deep, right, for the person. And it always comes down to whenever, whatever it is that that person tells me, right. it always comes down to that they're most happy when they're doing something for others. Interesting. It all boils down to that right there. Right. Okay. And, and there are many different ways in which you can do for others, right? right? right. Um, so then it boils down to doing something for others and then figuring out, well, what's your talent? What's your joy? How are you going to do for others? Oh, got it. So when you're sitting down with clients, for example, uh, you know, if I, uh, I'm in the financial world as well, and I agree with you that it, 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 most people think it's about making money, but it's about more or less what that money represents uh, and what they can do with that money that I have found drives them more often. So e even with your clients, is that, that's what you sit, try to find out uh, what their goals are with that? How, how when, do you approach that? When I, meet, when I first meet someone that wants to work with me as a financial advisor, mm. um, we don't talk finance and investments. Okay. We, we, we talk goals and dreams. We, I see. We, we, we talk, what do, you want, what do you want? Got it. To do in your life. What are your goals? What are your dreams? Your personal, not financial. I right? see. Yeah. And then once you understand that, right. then you can look at the financial picture ah. and then align the two. Because okay. otherwise you work in a vacuum. Okay, right? okay. Otherwise, there's no connection. So that's important is connecting. It doesn't matter what investment you're in or anything as long if it's not connected to the personal financial, uh, the personal component of love and living the, you know, your dream and everything like that. Correct. Right. So passion, I think, is a part of, of all of this. So you, that means if in, when, when you're in New York, you were working, what is it, 15, 16, 18 hour days? I was. All right? And, and I, I want to talk a little bit about it because I think that's, that's fascinating because most people think that you just have one job, but you had two in New York. You had twin daughters, right? Well, uh, and which was part of the motivation, right? Okay. When, when, you're, when you're a divorced single dad, I see. Um, supporting twin daughters right. in Manhattan, <laughs> and, you, and, and you choose to be an educator an educator of inner city and homeless kids, wow. which doesn't make much money. So right. when I started as an educator in 1985 mm. in, in a Harlem Junior High School in mm. New York, my annual salary was 14.5. Wow. On Wall Street, I made that in a month. Holy cow. Right? So, okay, in, in, okay. In, in a good month. So I gave up, you know, a bulk of that income because my passion was to work with the 
to work with the kids. So you're right? able to find the way to combine the living standard and still doing what you love then. Right. So if I, if I made that choice to, to be a teacher of the kids, right. then I, I still need I still needed to feed my kids, okay, right? Right. And, and and so, fortunately, because of my education, right, I I had that opportunity to be able to mm. do both. Not everyone does. You're right. Okay. Uh, and and because we're talking about living, which is your second step, how did you get into stand-up comedy? I'm always fascinated. I, I love. I you know on Netflix I watch comedians. <laughs> um, one of my UCLA MBA classmates also is a uh, former stand-up comedian. He did NBC, and he and he said it's a tough market to crack. But you did you do it in New York as well, or was it just when you got to LA or here? No, I start. I I started in New York. I actually. Okay. I actually was actively involved in the political scene in New York City. I was the vice president of the second largest um, Democratic club okay, okay. in New York, the Village Reform Democratic Club. Got it. And I was on that path, and I felt that that's how I was going to make a difference to my community. Okay. I, I, I wanted to be mayor of New York City, to be oh, honest. Oh, wow, okay. That's right. the reason why I went to law school. Oh, okay. Um, so you had politics as another dream of yours then, too, then? It was. It's, it was. It no it's longer like, is. No longer which, is, which is like I'm getting at. Okay, I so see. I decided to give up politics. <laughs> I had an epiphany. Okay, all right. And, and, and didn't want to put myself in that world anymore. It's a smart move. I'm involved in politics, and trust me, I, you're on the right track. <laughs> different than community activism, mm, by the way. Mm, politics mm. and community activism, two different things. Ah. I've always stayed involved with... Com you know, activities in the community that's going to better right. the community. Um, but, but instead of politics, I thought I would start doing political and social satire okay. to highlight um, the issues that um, I felt needed to be brought to the fore. Okay. Very much like the Daily Show and the Colbert. Oh, okay, report. okay. So, so Stephen Colbert, the, uh, uh, John Oliver, that, that type of humor is... Okay, so... Uh, we're a little bit off track, but I love talking about this. Excited. We got to do another show with you. Uh, so I perform under the name John Just. So you can John have, Just. Okay. You can have John Just back on okay, the show. Okay, that's great. I will. Okay, John Just. Very so. different conversation this would be, <laughs> by the way. Right? All, right, yeah. all right. Well, two candidates, Hillary Clinton and Trump, all right, right now. Uh, so what, what is your political satire among those two candidates being equal uh, so you're not taking on one side but maybe picking on both of them. So, you, so you really want me to go, <laughs> you really want me to, I wasn't even prepared. Thank God, don't worry about it, okay, okay. I, I wasn't even prepared to go there but you know, <laughs> I, um, I often say to my audience, I say, well, you know, how many are you supporting Trump and how many are you supporting Clinton? And I get almost no responses, <laughs> or, you know. And I said, oh, so most of you are like me and hoping that climate change destroys the planet <laughs> oh, before God election it. day. Uh, right? I see, I see. I, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, we're going to be right back after a break, and we got a lot more exciting things coming. we got the next two steps, so see you very shortly. Aloha everyone, I hope you've been watching ThinkTech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Aloha, this is Reg Baker with Business in Hawaii. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We would love to hear from you, and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474 or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com, or you can tweet us at thinktechhi. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha! Thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii, Asia in Review. My name is Johnson Choi. My next show next month is on October 13, 11 a.m. See you then. Bye-bye. Welcome back, and again, we're very excited. We're talking about the four steps of living a fulfilling life.
and uh, we have John here who uh, is also a stand-up comedian and he had a couple fun jokes. Uh, his stage name is John Just, so uh, we're going to bring him back later on the show. Got to have another one with just John Just because uh, uh, it's pretty funny just to hear the little bit of things there. But moving on, so we've talked about how love, living, first two steps, what's the third one to living a fulfilling life? To always be learning, to always okay. to always expanding that knowledge and wisdom. Okay, and right? why is that so important? It's important because the more knowledge and wisdom you acquire, the more um, possibilities uh, and potential mm. that you you have. So you know, I, I spoke earlier how how fortunate I was to be able to teach and work with inner city kids, even mm. though it, it paid me very little. Sure. Um, I, because I have a degree in education and a degree in economics, I was then able to go to my Wall Street job right. and make the money I needed to make to support myself and my twin daughters, right? right? right. If I didn't have that other knowledge, sure. I wouldn't have been able to, uh, to do that. Got it. So today's world, uh, and you hear this a lot, we used to have a manufacturing society, even here in Hawaii, pineapple, sugar, but now we're having to move to a service base or expertise, knowledge, computer science, STEM, uh, STEM research. So for you, for somebody, I guess, at any age, how would you tell them to get started learning? Uh, what if somebody says, oh, I'm in my 40s or 50s, I'm too old? Well, what do you say to that? I say, first of all, there is no age. Okay. We're all eternal. Mm, all right? right. And there's only the now. Okay. Right? The, the past moment's gone. The future moment, we don't know what it is. Sure. It's only here and now. Sure. Right? So here and now, just pursue what you love, going mm. back to that, that, that first component. Sure. Right? And, and learn whatever brings you joy, whatever it is that you want to learn. And, and and, you, yeah. So, I mean, is it going to take classes? Is it reading? How would you recommend somebody? Like, I, I actually, because I'm in traffic a lot, I read one or two books a week on Audible. You know, I do the double speed and everything. That's one way I uh, learn. How about for you? How do you I, learn, If you're an right? audio person, fine. If, right? you, if you're a visual person, I mean, you can go on YouTube and there's okay. so many different... Um, the TED Talks and sure, and, yeah. and and and, yeah. and and there are free courses from MIT and Harvard now. Right, right. I mean, when I was a kid, I had to go to a library and look <laughs> in a card catalog and get right. a book off a shelf and do research. Even when I went to law school, it was about research. Right. Today, we take out you know the, this computer, which yeah. used to be a big IBM computer, the same power in this thing. Right. We go on Google and. Anything and, and everything is at our fingertips. It is, tips, and right? I, it's amazing that our phones now have more uh, capacity than uh, the uh, first uh, the spaceship that went to the moon. That's right. how Those advanced we've gone. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so learning and uh, so you're a standard comedian too, right? Where do you get your materials? <laughs> you, you How do you learn? I, I love that. I, 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 I like that. Right? I, 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 I love laughing. I'm, uh, you know, and 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 that the stand-up humor thing is important because you know, uh, laughter is a cure to a lot of ailments that you know studies have shown. When you're able to laugh and release, you know, it, it helps with depression. It helps with so many things. So that's why I want to. I think that's part of being smart is learning to laugh. Right, which is why I've chose to do stand-up comedy because if I want to bring love to all and joy yeah. to all, that's one way in which to do it. And as you said, it's, it's great for the health. The material writes itself in today's society. <laughs> okay. it, 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 it always has. I mean, you talked about, um, you know, Hillary and, 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 and Trump. Um, but and we're on a tech show, so there are a lot of techies out there. So for all the <laughs> techies out there, especially you Pokemon Go <laughs> people out there, um, um, I'm, I'm going to warn you against Donald Trump because he just announced that if he gets elected president, he's going to ban all Pokemon from entering the country. Um, so if, if you want to continue to play Pokemon, you need to not vote for Trump. He said he's going to build a wall around each of your houses, so you have to stay indoors and watch reruns of Celebrity Apprentice. That's hilarious. So um, make sure you don't 
vote for Trump if you want to continue to play Pokemon. Pokemon Go, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's great. So that's good. So you do this on a regular basis. And did you you know how some people actually have go to comedy school, like the Saturday Night Live, Second Wind in Chicago or what have you? Did you do any training like that then? My comedy school was in New York City. Um, Washington Square Park, which is a, which is the center of Greenwich Village, okay. and there's a there's a, a big fountain in the center, right. and some of the top comics would go into that center and perform their comedy. Really, um, Rick Avilas, um, Dave Chappelle, wow, um, just to name two. The two, um, um, Charlie Albert, and. Um, and 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 another comic named Albert. Um, um, they were amazing, and right. I watched them, and I kind of learned from them. I learned from them. Part of the learning process is also learning from others, getting a mentor or a team together to learn from each other. So that's part of that learning process. Then correct. Got it. They were my school. The they street, were your school. The streets when you live in New York, the streets <laughs> of New York definitely teach you a I, lot. I love New York City. And so here, for those that live in Hawaii, uh, how often do you perform? Uh, and and I, I remember going to a couple comedy clubs when I was in graduate school, but I uh, haven't gone since. Um, how, do we have a lot of comedy clubs here? In we don't have. Hawaii? any comedy clubs, but we have long-standing comedy nights at um, a couple of different venues. Oh, so see. there's Comedy U Wednesday nights okay. at Anna O'Brien's. Okay. There's Jose Dynamite of Friends at O'Toole's okay. on Friday evenings. Oh, okay. And then there's a um, comedy show that often brings in mainland comics um, to feature, to headline with the local comics, you know, featuring before them at Hawaiian Brian's on Saturday Got nights. Got it. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask you to send me this information and we'll put it on my blog, Art of Thinking Smart, so they can come see you uh, uh, if they're saying, hey, I want to learn something new about Pokemon Go. <laughs> you may be the person that you, they can learn sure, about Wednesday it. Wednesday the 28th okay. at, at Anna's at Comedy U. Right? Okay, that, great. That's the next show. Right? Oh, okay, yeah. that's the next show then. All right, so we have love and, and we're, we're loving, loving, living, living. learning. 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 Is it the fourth one started with an L2, I'm hoping? No. Oh, it's not. Okay, all right. That's I okay. Tr I tried to <laughs> think tried of to an think L word, okay. but, but, but the reality is it, it's giving. Giving, okay. It's always ah, giving. Ah, okay. You're, 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 you're a loving, living, learning, and you're, and then you're always giving. And okay. whatever it is that you're doing, you're, you're giving. You're giving to others. You're giving to all. Um, again, going back to when I would counsel my, my students, what brought them the most joy right. was doing for others. Others, mm. Right. Um, if you ask anyone, they'll tell you whenever they do something for right. someone they either love or even a stranger, they're joyful. Got it. And, and so uh, for you, um, you're currently still in education here in Hawaii. Could you talk about that a little bit? Well, um, not directly sure um although i what i i have been directly here in hawaii right. not currently um currently i'm on the financial committee of an amazing public charter school called seats okay it's the school for examining essential questions of sustainability okay the mission of the school is to teach its students all about the environment and how to best serve that ah. best serve that environment um, um and it's one of the best schools here on the island and in the country, they're, do, they're doing amazing things. Got it. So I'm supporting their mission any and every way that I, way that I can. Got I it. also get invited to, um, to be a guest in classrooms. Okay. Um, at, um, currently at Punahou. Okay. Right. To help the students um, with money management. Okay, so money management. We'll talk a couple of minutes about that since that's actually your day job. Uh, would you say and it's your nine to five, or do you still just like you were in New York do a variety of different? I've never things? had a nine to so five. You've never so had a nine to five. That, Got that, it. That I'm aware. Uh, of, right? I see. I see. Everything I do, I don't consider a job. Okay. I, I consider it all my passion, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I blend it all and I blend it all together. Sure. So it's twenty four seven. Got it. Twenty four seven. I'm loving, living, learning, and giving. Whether right. it's as a financial advisor, as an educator, as a comic, as a as a father, um, as a friend. Right. Got it. So what? So e, talking about that, and, and just uh, maybe a couple minutes, uh, we're almost done with the show. I wish I could have more time with John Jess here. Uh, if somebody wants to think smarter on their finances, 
and, and make smarter decisions and be successful in their own right. So it's not about accumulating, you know, that famous Wall Street line, how much, what is your number? Just more, right? For, so it, it's probably not low in that, going that direction. What do you tell people to, uh, uh, what do they do with their money? Is it just investing for a rainy day, saving? Uh, what, what, how do you say this is one way you can live out the three L's and the G, right? Uh, but you still need money to live off of because if you can't make money doing your passion, uh, it's going to be difficult. So you had to do two jobs to do that. Uh, kind of when it comes to the finances, what is your, uh, your view on things? Well, it goes back to what I said earlier. So what I advise my clients is um, first make sure your goal is clear, right? Okay. And your dream is clear, right? Okay. So just simply let's say let's say the goal is they want to buy a new home. Okay. Right? That's their dream. They want right. they want to own their own, own home, right? right? So then so we'll take so then we'll take a look at that. When do you want to achieve that goal by? Do you want to achieve it by five years, ten years, fifteen years, one year, right? Okay. Okay. And then so then we look at the financial picture, right, and right. say, okay, so your dream home um, in the in the area that you want to live, what what is the value of that? It. It's, it's five hundred thousand here in Hawaii, sure. Let's say, uh, and I'm just making up numbers right, right, as right. as we go along. So if it's five hundred thousand, and maybe you're going to need a hundred, a hundred fifty thousand as a deposit, right, right. And you currently have a bucket of seventy-five thousand. Okay. Let's say so. We need to possibly double that. Okay. So what reasonably would be the time horizon to double that, okay. and on what type of investment and what type of risk would it take in order to do that? Mm -hmm. Right. And then we look at we look at that whole picture and what are you going to be contributing in that time period towards that to speed up that process? Got right. It. So, but again. That seventy-five thousand right. would have no meaning to invest if it wasn't tied to the oh, goal oh, I see. Okay. and the time. So, the and I just yeah. made that goal up. Right, right. right Another right. goal may be to travel, right? Okay. And, um, or start a business or something like or to that. To start a business, Got right? It. Yeah. Or financial independence. That's usually one of the big ones now. <laughs> so it's it's it, part of being smart is tying the financial aspect to a dream or goal that you have so that you can love, uh, live, learn, and give, and, and not focus on, because I see so many people just focus on the money, but uh, you know you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have those four things. They're doing it backwards. Right, they're doing it backwards. So you, I, I, right now I'm reading a biography of Walt Disney, and it's very interesting to know that all of his closest friends said that he didn't care about money, he cared about doing what he loved to do, and money just came. And, and he was deeply in debt. He went bankrupt he, om, once, almost twice. Disneyland, people thought it was going to be a flop. Even Snow White, they thought it would be a flop. But he just said, no, we're going to do this. This is my passion. And he talked about he wanted it, it to be the happiest place on earth because when people come to Disneyland, he wanted them to go back out to their own homes and spread that happiness. So I think you and Walt Disney. Sharing yeah. love and joy. Yeah, right? sharing love and joy. That's great. Well, thank you so much. I, you know what? We got to have you back on the show as John Just and just <laughs> do a stand-up. I think that's hilarious there. Well, you know what? I want to just thank you again. You can go to artofthinkysmart.com for more information on what we talked about today. And also, if you want to see John Just uh, in his comedic routine and the different shows that he's on, as well as some other links uh, for some of the information that we have so we can continue to learn and live a smarter life. Thank you so much. I'm David Chang, and I'll see you again next time.